Welcome to Angelo's Tennis. And this is going to be a really good one. I'm surprised I haven't done this already because this is something that I'm, I'm passionate about. And I think that I'm very knowledgeable on. And I think that I have, um, have mastered the concept. And uh, I just had an email from someone who asked this question. So hopefully he's seeing this video and hopefully this will contribute to the answer to his question. And uh, yeah, so let's get into it. So if I had a kid, if I had a kid of my own, and I wanted him or her or they wanted to be really good at tennis, they loved tennis, or just say they loved tennis, they wanted to play tennis, and they loved, they liked competing, they were okay, they were at a point where they liked to compete, they liked to play matches, they're okay with it. It doesn't bother them. It doesn't bother them, make them up so upset, etc. This is what I would do. Under, under say, 14 up to approximately, and maybe I'll get into more of this in a book that I that I have uh, reviewed. Uh, it's called Competitive Tennis for Young Players, so maybe I'll put that up on the screen and go over this as well. But let's just say approximately 13, 14 years old, up until that point, what I would do with them is I would have them play a lot. I'd have them like, play for fun, play, etc. No private lessons. There's no private lessons. I'm not going to get into the details, but there would be no private lessons Hardly any instruction, if at all. It'd be a very play-based, fun environment. And like I said, this is for this would be for kids who want to play points. They're okay with playing games, scoring, playing tournaments. This is what I would do. I would have them play tournaments. So if they're under 10, I'd have them play under 10 tournaments, mini tennis tournaments, orange ball tournaments, green ball tournaments, appropriate for their age. And if they've mastered, if they've mastered that, let's say you have an orange ball kid and he's too good, he's beating everyone, I would go and have him play national level orange ball tournaments. And if there's no national ball, national level orange ball tournaments, I might have him play green ball tournaments locally. And if he mastered the green ball, okay, or he's mastered the orange ball and there's nothing else, that's it. He's under 10, I'm leaving him alone. I'm leaving her alone, okay? Uh, I'm not going to push him or her anymore. It doesn't matter. He's She's nine years old. It doesn't matter. Okay. There's maybe do some other things I'm gonna I would do. I'm not gonna get into it in this video. But from a, this is just from a tennis specific standpoint. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait because I'm not afraid that my kid, like the rest of these parents that don't know anything, I'm not afraid that my little nine year old isn't gonna play enough to be the next Novak Djokovic. It doesn't matter. All them kids playing hours and hours and hours, eight years old, nine years old, getting all the training. Doesn't matter, 100% blanket statement, it doesn't matter, it's worthless. Now, they may be learning some things, they may be getting some, some training, but the point I'm trying to make is the kid that just goes out there and plays matches on a regular schedule or a semi-regular schedule for fun, you know, regular meaning maybe they just play year-round, they play like 30 matches a year. And then you got the 9-year-old playing 80 matches a year, doesn't matter. There's plenty of time. Even if that nine-year-old could crush the kid that's playing 30 matches, it doesn't matter. The kid that's playing 30 matches can easily catch up. There's plenty of time. So, moving forward, let's say I have an 11-year-old, 12-year-old, same thing. Green ball. He's going to be playing green ball. If he's if he's winning in green ball, it's too. Maybe maybe he plays yellow ball. Maybe I look up. He can play yellow ball. He's playing regional, local tournaments. He's doing really well. He's winning all the matches. I might go. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do regional sectionals. And if he's and I'm gonna look for him or her to have a two to one win to loss ratio, approximately two to one. Okay, and if he's if she's a hundred percent win percentage or eight wins to one loss, I'm gonna go national. I'm gonna invest my money. I'm gonna be okay if I have the money. Everything's fine. I'm gonna be okay with investing my money and for the experience of the national level tournament at 12 years old, at 13, at the 12 and under, 14 and under. And I would go far as far as saying you can skip the 12 and under for the Nationals. If you don't want to invest in the 12 and under Nationals, it's still not important. It still doesn't matter. But at 14, 13, I'm going to invest. If she's that good and she's not getting the 2 to 1 ratio, she's not losing enough, I would invest in the National level. For one, I'll, I'll, I'll invest it for several reasons. And I'll do this over going and looking for local players. I'm going to do this over looking for local players and coaches and paying them or getting them to play with them for a number of reasons. One, it's more fun. 
I get to go with him or if I, especially if I get to go with, or my, the mother gets to go with or whoever's going with, because that's what I, I, for me personally, I enjoy that. I'll, I'll set up the, the date. I might do this six times a year, four times a year. That's our vacation. And I'm going to go travel with them and have a nice little vacation. She's going to meet new, new friends. She's going to make new friends. The chances are, if she's on that level, these are the people that she fits with. And she's not going to find them in the local area. So why am I going to have her play with some 20-year-old kid that she's not going to be friends with? And, be, and, and they're not, you know, I don't want my, I mean, to a certain degree, I might be okay with my 14-year-old daughter having a 20-year-old mentor. But I'd rather have them playing with their friends. And I'm going to get into more. I might not get into it in this video. I'm going to get into more reasons why that's the case. Um, and that's what I want. That's what I want for my 14-year-old uh, my daughter. And that's what I'm going to start it. That's when I'm going to start getting more serious. 13, as far as going to nationals. 13, 14, 15, 16. I would go for as far as saying, depending on what you're what you think that the person is, can do or what they want to do, you can wait until 16 years old to do that. You can start, you can start 15, 16 year old nationals. Let's say you want to be a Division One tennis player. Wait until you're 16 to play nationals. It's not, it's not wait. You know, it depends on the whole process of puberty. It's you, you could wait until you're 16, 15, 16 to play nationals and still get into a Division One school, because the primary. The primary thing that you have to be concerned with, and I did this in my video with how long does it take to learn tennis, is do they have that basis, that foundation? And from a tennis-specific standpoint, we're looking at two to four years of regular tennis. And they could have got that from 10 to 14 years old. They could have got that from 8 to 12, eight to, uh, eight to 12 years old, that four-year period. And let's even say six years, from 10 to 16. They got that foundation. Now they can take it serious because now they've hit puberty. Everything changes when the kids hit puberty. Everything changes. So all the stuff that they think they're learning, they hit puberty, they hit that, they start playing 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds, all of a sudden everything that they thought they knew goes out the door. It's worthless now. It doesn't, it doesn't apply. Or it doesn't apply very often. And then you think, well, they still have it in their, you know, they still have it in their back, back pocket to use. They forget. Not everyone has the greatest memory as Angela. Someone like Angela, I have an amazing memory, right? And if you you meet people, you get to know them. You see that they forget things. These, especially kids, they're not gonna they're not gonna remember all these things that you think that they they're gonna use, etc. Bunch of junk, not necessary. So let's go over. Even if even if you wanted to be a Djokovic, you still don't need you still don't need to start at four years old and three years old. All that. Most important thing is that you have the have the you have the knowledge, and where are you going to get the knowledge? Where you're going to get the knowledge, if you don't want to get it from somebody else, or you don't trust anyone, you're going to get it through your own experience. The kid goes to the tournaments, and he or she learns from their peers. I'll tell you a quick story. One of the things that I that I lacked was the uh, the intensity. I had it in me. I just didn't understand that I needed to do it, that I needed to apply it. I was very laid back, just kind of playing playing the, the, the game. But I didn't know that I had the aggressive play, the aggressive topspin, the big forehand in me. So I met a kid. I was coaching a rec, a rec, a rec program for the city rec program. And uh, I wouldn't even call it a tennis program. It was a city rec tennis and one of the kids that was hired to be a coach was a national player. He was ranked as high as 250 nationally. He was a Pennsylvania State champion. His name was Doug Kaplan. You can look him up. He went on to play for some bougie D1 school that you never heard of. And then he quit. I think he quit. His mom played for Michigan. Hit with her as well. She's amazing. Amazing person. Great tennis person to be around for sure. And this kid told me, he was the first thing he told me, he's like, you just got to do this. And he did. I went out, he told me, he taught me, he just basically told me to do it, he told me to be more aggressive. And I watched him do it. And I watched him play a couple of matches, etc. Maybe I'll put some film of him playing too. I think I wish I could find some film of him. It's going to be hard to find though. And 
because he was a big hitter. He was like six foot two. And I went and I played in a match after that, and I destroyed this kid. I just just destroyed a four zero, a young younger high school kid four zero, and I absolutely destroyed him. And uh, he was from another country, from like Argentina or something. So he's like had that top spinny play. And I learned that. You see how I learned that? By being around someone else who was a national level player. And I had coaching before. I didn't really have private lessons, but I had, I've been to clinics, I've been to group group classes, and then he, that's probably some of the most valuable coaching I ever got. And it was from a 16 year old kid who was ranked 250 in the United States, never played a national level tournament until he was. 16 and he was ranked 250 uh now he didn't push it to get in the top 100 because he was only playing a couple of national tournaments a year i mean he had different agendas he wasn't trying to play for usc or these other schools he wasn't trying to be a pro tennis player he's a businessman so i'll put up on the screen now i'm going to change to uh the book. I'm gonna bring up the book. I'm gonna talk about the book a little bit, a little bit more, uh, and I can get into some more things of what I would do. Okay, here's the book. It's Competitive Tennis for Young Players: The Road to Becoming a Top Player by Manfred Grosser, Richard Schaumborn. This is in the Angelos Tennis Library, by the way. Among all the other books that you need, or could ever dream of needing, or, or whatever. Here we are. I shouldn't even be giving this away. I really shouldn't even be giving this away. Compared to what other people are paying for, for tennis. Versatile basic training. Step one, four to six, seven years old. If you're below, this is what this means. If you're below seven years old, you don't need any tennis at all. At all. It benefits you. It doesn't benefit you. Remember the title here. The Road to Becoming a Top Player by Richard Schaumborn. Richard Schaumborn is the father of German tennis. Ask anyone in Germany who he is. They'll know who he is. How do you get to be a top player? Before seven years old. Versatile basic training. You don't even need to step on a tennis court. Children should be given age-suitable and versatile motor training which has a very high level of play involved. See that play, high level of play. Everything should be play. There's no instruction. Only time you need to give a, give a six-year-old instruction is if they can't play the game because, I'm not going to say it. They, they just can't, they can't play the game. And you have to step in and say, look, this is how you do it. And in that case, you should use, you should use imitation. They should be trying to imitate you. For this reason, the following forms are suggested as being appropriate. Motivated exercising. Motive, it should be motivating. Because that's going to encourage them to play freely and actually learn. Exercises that can be done individually or in small groups. You can think of like individually, just so you see a kid. You see these little kids, these little four-year-olds throwing a ball against the wall mindlessly because they're four years old. That's what I'm talking about. That's excellent training for a four-year-old. Just throwing a beach ball up against the wall and having it bounce back at him and hitting him in the head. Where no, no large organizational measures are needed. Inexpensive. Why are you wasting your money? I'll tell you something I will spend money on at five years old. If they understand all this, and I was busy, i send my kid to a a little, little, they call it like little gyms or my gym, little gyms, those baby gyms. If they knew what they were doing, I'd send my kid there and just let him, let him go crazy. Which pose no great demand upon training equipment. There's no training equipment here. You know, all kinds of like kid stuff that anybody, everyone uses. Concentration. Children of this age can't sustain long training sessions. Now, now, some kids might be able to, but that doesn't mean that uh, it's necessary. 
They let them do whatever they want. That's what it says here. Let them do whatever they want. As long as they're not hurting anybody. This con Okay, training goals and content. The contents may be children's gymnastics. That's what I'm talking about. Children, children's gymnastics. Best activity for kids. Children's gymnastics. One of the best activities for tennis, for preparation for tennis. If I would have been a gymnast, I already have good gym, gymnastics ability, but if I would have been a trained, gym, trained gymnast as a kid, I would have been ridiculous as a, kid, a child tennis player. The best tennis player I ever coached, best tennis player I ever coached was a girl. She never saw her potential because she probably quit. I never, never saw her again after 10 years old. She was a full-time, basically a full-time gymnast from young age up to like 10, 10, 11, 12 years old and, and, and on. Best kid, uh, one of the best kids I've ever seen on a tennis court. Judo, wrestling, ice skating. Judo, wrestling, these kind of things. Ice skating, hockey. This, this is my order right here, by the way. Best activities, gymnastics, judo, ice skating, hockey. Different small ball games, throwing, catching. I gotta like hold myself back because I have like so much, so much I can say. I just talk forever. Uh, okay, within specific area of tennis, a gradual and careful instruction for children to technical basics of simple strokes with accompanying material should take place. The term strokes does not mean stroke technique, but rather ball and racket control. None of this is necessary. He, he's, he's, and then he gets into his other book here. Again, I, I stick with this this under seven. Just forget about it. They'll figure it out. I mean, sometimes I think in the case with these little kids, they they got they're like so hell bent on playing, and in that case, what are you gonna do? They're precocious. All right, here we go. Percentage of it gives you like percentages here, guidelines. Tennis specific training should be no more than 30% of the exercise time. Basic training is prime importance. I'm not going to get into all that. You can read it in the book. Here we go. Basic training, 6, 7, 9, 10 years, 10 years old. So you see up to 10 years old, we, we still have basic training. I saw a 10-year-old one, a 10-year-old once, no, I'm sorry, a 6-year-old playing orange ball. Why? Because he looked like a 10-year-old. The kid was huge. That's what this means. Six, seven, nine, ten. That's why six is included in this. Because you do see these big six year olds that are developed more playing with ten year olds. But you're not going to see, you're probably not going to see four and five year olds play with ten year olds. You're probably not going to see six year olds play with ten year olds. More, the more this number goes up, the more you're like seven, eight, you're going to see seven and eight year olds. You're not going to see 12-year-olds playing with 7-year-olds. That's inappropriate. It's inappropriate. It's completely inappropriate at many, many different levels. This is known as the best motoric learning age. This is why, this is why tennis is not important at this point. It's not uh, primary, a primary importance. Schooling of reaction and frequency speed, speed, which are also dependent on the nervous system, and versatile training of the motor system. These are primary. And even the stuff he's talking about, notice he's not using terms like forehand technique, backhand technique, all the stuff you see people talk about. Training should be sport specific. Sport specific is anticipating abilities. That's sport specific. Not how to hit a forehand. You need to be able to anticipate. You don't need to. You don't need to be on a tennis court to learn how to anticipate. You can learn that in other games. In fact, that's why the red ball and the orange ball so. Because you can learn how to anticipate on a mini tennis court. If you're seven years old and you're playing yellow ball, you don't know how to. You're not going to learn how to anticipate. It's too. It's not realistic.
Okay, 50% tennis training up to 10 years old. That means if you're playing tennis twice a week, the kid should also be doing gymnastics and field hockey the other two times a week. Not tennis four, three or four times a week and field hockey once a week. All them kids, I'm telling you right now, all them kids that, that want to do tennis full-time at 10 years old, they chances are they're, they're like in a phase of life. They just happen to be in this phase where they're obsessed with tennis. They'll drop out. They'll go do something else later on. Or maybe they will continue pursuing tennis, and they'll be lumped up, lumped in the group of all the other kids that started whenever they started. It doesn't really make them any, any better. The other kids will catch up sooner or later. So here we go. Let's keep it moving. Child as an all-rounder. Most important, being an all-rounder. Handball. Handball. How, how often do you see handball or like like um, slapping the ball or balloons over a net? How important is that? You never see it. You don't need a racket. No knockout tournaments at this stage. They don't need to learn how to be tough, mentally tough. Being mentally tough can be learned, or it could also be you could also be ingrained and born with. It can also be learned. So here we are, step three. 9, 10, 11, 13. Developmental training. Now you can get into tennis specific. If if you went through the previous two the previous two steps. You got a kid who's never stepped on an athletic field or court in his life. You're not doing developmental training. You're back in basic training, 10 years old, 11 years old, 12 years old. You see them kids, 12 years old, barely have any sporting experience, and they're taking tennis lessons? For what? But see, you can't find... Oftentimes you can't find any kids to play because they're all taking lessons. This is still very rare. This kind of setup in tennis is rare. It's still rare. It's one of those things I thought it was going to change because of the information. Never going to change. All right, here we go. Moving along. Moving along. Step four. There's another step for development and training. Up 11, 13, 14, 15. So we see here, this is where I, I was referencing that kid, that national level player. He was still in developmental training. And because his development was so good, remember his mom played for Michigan. She wasn't stupid. She was a sport, a sporting person. Not just a tennis player. And... There it is, 15 years old. He really didn't compete until he was 15, 16, and he's automatically 250 in the country. 250 in the country, I'm not saying it's amazing in the United States, but it's no joke. Like, that's not... This kid would beat anyone in my area. I'll tell you that. Like I said, he was a state champion for Pennsylvania, too, at 16 years old. He was like 16 or 17. Caution when dealing with girls. Talks about that. Girls are not boys. What's he saying here? It's different. Girls... Girls can play women's tennis, adult tennis. Boys, not so much. Not a good idea. Not a good idea. Not necessary. One other thing, point, one point I want to make about that 16-year-old too, that kid looked like an adult. This is the thing you can get wrong sometimes. These little kids, these little kids that look like adults because they're so big. After they hit puberty. And they're not adults. They're still children. 
inside. All right, some adults aren't adults. Many adults. Depends on the situation. So, step five, connected training. Connecting training, 14, 15, 16, 18. So you see, you see often you see these girls, 14, 15, 16, playing ITFs. They're in a connected train. They're in connecting training. They're trying to connect their training with into a they're trying to make it practically applicable. Now they're trying to, they've been trying to do that, but now they're trying to cement it. Like, okay, I know what's going on. I'm connecting this, making it absolutely applicable to the match. In all cases, in all points, as much as possible. Most players will never get here. Most children will never get here, no matter what you do. But in my experience, they'll never get to connect to connecting training because they don't want to. They don't want to mentally do it. It's hard. It's hard mentally. It's not play. It's not play anymore. It's focus. It's work. This is where it becomes work. You can be, in my opinion, you can play ITFs and still be in play mode. Talks about fitness training. Here, uh, you can read this on your own. Talks about education being a conflict. This is what I would do with my kid. I would follow this to more, you know, and I would I would use it as a guide, as I said, learning on the on the learning as I go, but I would use this as a guide. I might not follow it exactly. Because I'm gonna learn from my experience too. Top class training, 16 and 19. It talks about the physical maturity of an adult, reached by the age of 16 and 19. You gotta know when the kid is a, is a uh, is an adult, is I mean a biologically, physically an adult. Otherwise, you could you could damage, you could physically damage the, the child. What's the point in doing that? Even if you want to play Division One, Division One college, if you're good enough, I don't even know how it works exactly. Like I said, I didn't play Division One, but if you're good enough, you could walk on. If you're good enough, a lot of this that you'd be so a lot of this is so if you're so far you could be so far advanced as some of these kids. You could just walk on, you should be able to just walk on. And like I'll play the if they'll give you the problem is they wouldn't give you the shot to 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 walk on and do that. But you know, fuck fuck college tennis. Who cares? What is it? you get a to get a get a uh, a free free college education. Just get a loan, who cares? Pay that back. I'm still paying on my college loans. So, moving along. This is like more like being on tour. I mean, no one even needs to read this. Most people, most people need to read this. It's interesting, but I mean. So, there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Have a great day.